back another uh, MATLAB study this time for this video event triggered control so if you watch this video um, we are discussing about how we can relax periodic interactions by using a sample data version of a signal and I am going to illustrate this for this block diagram basically we are going to update control signals a periodically based on this event condition shown on this video um, here is the simulation setup uh, final simulation time is 20 seconds we are using first order error uh, for uh, basic discretization uh, discretization time step is 0 0.005 seconds and here is a dynamical system a and b 0 1 0 0 b 0 1 some initial condition um, for control design k I am using pole placement or eigenvalue placement. There is also another video on this on my channel. Um, this is the initialization for the first control signal you had, if you remember, basically um, here, um, sample data version of the actual control signal. Here is the actual control signal. And basically, if this event condition here, u hat minus u, if norm of u hat minus u, this is the Euclidean norm, is greater than some constant, let's start simple, let's start a smaller constant, 0 0.01, then update the controller, otherwise don't do anything. Basically, once this event condition is violated, meaning that um, the other side of this, we are going to send a, a, a we are going to update u hat with uh, its most current version. And we are basically controlling this system with uh, a periodically with this event triggered control law. Um, as you know, this is for data recording, this is for plotting. Now, total number of events, I am going to count total number of events, which is here. At initially, there is no event. When we, once this norm holds, basically once this event condition gets violated, we are going to increase the number of events. So, if we don't use any event triggered control, information basically the final time is 20 seconds divided by dt we are going to make 4000 periodic interactions so let's see how event triggered control reduces these interactions um, all right i am running the code as it is um, all right so here is the first figure um, here let me make it larger um, first of all, um, black is the x1, blue is the x2 state. Um, red is the u hat that we are applying to the system. I am also plotting u, the continuous time or periodic control signal, blue. It is not um, applied to the system. In this case, we have a total number of 100 events. And this reduction calculates 1 minus um, basically total number of events divided by 4000 so actually let's recalculate this reduction okay this is now correct let me copy paste this so basically we had a, a total of 100 events meaning that you know we have a 97.5 percent reduction why if we don't do if we don't use event triggered, triggered control, we need 4,000 periodic intera basically interactions with the system. Instead, we have 100, so we have 97.5% reduction. Now I am increasing this epsilon. It was 0 0.01. And once we do that, we had a new figure. Basically, right now we had 28 events. And now control signal becomes basically like this the control signal applied to the system is red it is more visible and it is it is difference between the um, u blue and u hat red is more visible and you know we basically increase this threshold epsilon once we increase this threshold you know uh, it becomes it makes it harder to violate the event condition so as a result we make uh less events so in this case we have 99.3 reduction 
percent of, of reduction and total number of events is 28. Now, of course, performance will get worse, right? So there's a trade-off. If you want to make less events, performance can get worse. Now I'm making 0.5, running it. Now total number of events, 8. Uh, much less and of course performance gets uh, worse. Let me enlarge this for you. Right, so basically you only make event um, when you differ uh, than the you had by 0.5. Actually you can see this 0.5 right when it is difference is 0.5 we basically apply a new control signal and performance getting worse but it is again it is a trade-off between how frequently you want to communicate with the system versus performance although as this being said our new research addresses this issue maybe i can make a video on uh, performance recovery in event triggered control later i right now would like to focus on the basics now in the later last portion of this video let me see if I can find it okay and um, well let me get rid of this ad okay so basically if you look at here instead of using a constant epsilon I am make using a state dependent event triggering subject subject to stability condition that we need to verify for the sake of this video I am just going to use it um, for instance, now I am just using 0.5, the same threshold, but I am multiplying it by the two norm of the state, which is here x2. So once we violate this condition, uh, there is an event. And as I explained in this video, uh, as x approaches the zero, it makes it harder to violate so there will be more events, but initially we can reduce the events. So this is kind of to recover um, achieve uh, better performance other than boundedness results. So let me simulate. You will see what I, what uh, what do we mean by that. So now we were making eight uh, events basically when we just use threshold 0.5. Once we multiply this 0.5 with two norm of x, we have 22 events. Reduction um, is. 99.45 once again instead of making 4000 periodic uh, information exchange we just can control the system with 22 interactions with it and here is the blue is the again u uh, red line is the u hat and because we use and uh, this norm here basically once x approaches the zero this uh, uh, event rule violation of the or this event rule becomes right hand side of this event rule also getting smaller so we uh, make more frequent events and as a direct consequence we can achieve um, we can make x approaches the zero unlike this case right if you don't use if you just use a constant threshold so you cannot achieve x goes to zero but you have basically boundedness and basically you to you could make this simulation longer to illustrate this fact, right? So here you go. I, I run now for 50 seconds. Um, we kind of have a boundedness of the state trajectories. And if you want to get rid of this boundedness, you instead of using 0.5 here, you can use a norm dependent or state dependent event triggering. All right, I hope you find this video uh, helpful. Let me know if you have any comments, but this is how basically uh, the principle be principles behind the event triggering rule and how it behaves in uh, simulations. Take care.